Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to create a form that is going to validate to make sure that something is filled in and also to make it sticky. So the example here, we just have a text box, a select list, radio button, and comments as a simple example. So if I just go to submit this form without sub uh, having anything filled in, Right, we're going to get error messages for each of the things that are missing. And then as we start to type something in, and then I submit, you'll see that the form is sticky, meaning that it's keeping the same information there, and the error message for that one disappears. And then we still have error messages for the other ones that still need to be filled in. So we'll look at a select list example, Right, and we'll be able to make the select list sticky as well so that it will keep showing what the user had selected before. Uh, same thing for a radio button. We'll make that sticky. And a text box. And we'll also make that text box sticky. So if I delete something up here, then you'll see this is sticky and then this comes up with an error message. So once all the items are filled in, we can click Submit, and then we have a confirmation to display what was submitted by the form. So that's the goal of this next video. Okay, so if you go to the link that's at the top of the screen, you'll be able to test the form out yourself and be able to try putting some things into the different fields and seeing the error messages and how the stickiness of the form works. There are also files that you can download that will allow you to have your starter file. And so this form is set up as myform.php. And so it has the basic form set up and then we'll just work to add on the PHP coding to make it sticky and um, do some validation. So you'll want to download those starter files and open up myform.php to begin with. And when you take a look at that code, it's for the most part HTML, as I said, to display the form. And I just wanted to point your attention to the opening form tag where the action is set to equal results.php and the method equals post. So what that means is when the form is submitted, it's going to wrap up and collect the name and value pairs from the form. So that's where, why we have name equals in all of your form elements here. Uh, and so it's going to send the name and value pairs to results PHP using the post method. Now I do have a separate video that's up there for what's the difference between post and get. So if you want more details on that, go back and watch one of them. So the important thing to know right now for my form PHP is it's going to display the form and then when we submit it, it's going to send the result or send the name and value pairs to results PHP. Next, open up results.php. And there is some starter code in there for you as well. And at the beginning, you can see here, we are getting the data from the form and each of our form elements has a name value. So in the form, it's name equals sample box. So that's a sample text box. We have a select list. And so the name of that is called sample list. We have a couple of radio buttons. And so the name of those are radio example. And then we have a text area whose name is my comments. So we may have seen this already where we're using this to get the values from post and use, be able to just use these variables in our code. We could also just write out post sample box each time, but I'm gonna show you a technique to be able to filter in the incoming data to clean it up to make sure that we have 
something in form fields that are required and that uh, we can prevent hacking attacks also. So we want to filter our data when we get it in before we start using it right off the bat. And so one of the tools, and it's a newer tool in PHP, it's called filter var. And the filter var function uh, lets us take the data coming in and make sure that it's not garbage and to help prevent any hacking attacks. So we're filtering the data coming in and we can also have some different filters. There are sanitation filters and in this case uh, what we're working with are all strings but there's also a filter sanitize email and a filter sanitize URL. There's a filter sanitize for an, an integer and a uh, filter sanitize for a floating variable. And there's even a filter sanitize for special characters. So for more detail on the filter var, uh, w3schools.com has a nice little example uh, there that you can go for other types of the sanitization filters and options. So what this is going to do is uh, the filter sanitize string is going to strip the tags if there are any HTML tags or uh, special characters and encode them. So it's going to clean up this data and then apply it to our variable sample box and then it'll repeat the same thing for the list and the radio buttons and the comments. So now that we're getting the data in from the form, we want to check and create some error messages. So if the sample box is empty, so if it's equal to null, then we'll create an error message that says please enter some text. We'll also check the list to make sure that they selected something from the list. So if it's null, means they didn't pick anything. So we want to require them to pick something from the list. Same thing for a radio button. If they didn't pick something from the radio button, it'll generate an error message. And then same thing for the comments. If they didn't put anything into comments, then we get an error message. So some simple if statements, just checking to see if these are empty. And if they are, then we create an error message that we'll use to display back in our form. So this is going to go through, check each of those things that we want to make sure has a value, and then we'll do uh, some other checking to see, okay, now if we have any error messages, we can determine on whether to show the confirmation. Right? We only want this confirmation to display if there aren't any errors. So that's what this if statement is checking. So if the sample box error is not equal to empty, so these are the variables for the error messages. So if it's not equal to empty, or the list error is not empty, or the radio button isn't empty, or the comments error is not empty. So if any one of those are not empty that means that there is an error and if there is an error we're going to tell it to include the myformphp file so that means that if there's an error it's going to take a copy of the form of myformphp and put it into our results php script right in this position so we don't have to copy our form again Right? You might be tempted to say, okay, if there's an error, then here, and then paste in a copy of the form, which is a lot of work. And then if you make changes in the form, you have to go back and fix it in both places. So not the best way to handle it. So this is much easier. Just say, include that form PHP file in here. And then exit, which means it's not going to continue running anything else in this page or in this script. So if there are errors, show the form. Otherwise, that means there aren't any errors and go ahead and print our confirmation page. So the yellow 
or the additional code to add in to your script. Now in order to, this is going to then, if there are errors, it's going to show the myform.php file. So we need to update the myform.php script so that it will understand what these error messages are. Because right now your myform.php file doesn't have any idea what my comments error is or my sample box error. So we have to let it know that this could be coming. So if you switch back to your myform.php script and at the top of the script we're just going to set some default variables so that if sample box error doesn't exist, right, if it's not set, if the exclamation point means not, so if is set, if it's not set, sample box error, then we're going to say it's just an empty string. And then we do that for the other error messages as well. And so that would prevent PHP from saying uninitialized variable. In other words, I don't know what you're talking about. So here we're giving it a heads up saying if it happens that you get here and something is talking about sample box error, then just know that it's an empty string. Now we'll go down and set up your script to show those error messages. So moving a little further down in your code, right in here we've got the opening form tag and our text box. And then we're just going to splice in some PHP code here that is just a print or an echo statement that displays the error message. And then the same thing down here for the select list. So after the select list, we'll print out the error message for the select list. And then down a little further, we have the radio button group. So we can print the error message for the radio example and the error message for my comments. So this is a good point to save everything, upload your myform.php, and upload your results.php scripts, and go to the form and try different variations of entering some things into the form or not into the form, and see if your error messages show up. Now at this point it's not sticky, we'll do that next, but it's always good to test this in increments so that you know that your error messages are working and then we can add on the sticky part. So after you upload and test on your server, come back here and we'll look at making it sticky. Okay, hopefully the other code for you worked and now the next part is how do we get the stickiness into the form. So in addition to having our variables for our error messages at the top of our my, my form PHP script, we also need to tell it about sample box, sample list, radio example, and comments. Again, because they're coming to the form maybe for the first time before the form is being submitted and it won't know what these variables are. So we're initializing them to an empty string. Now to make it sticky, I'll go to the first text box in here. And in text boxes, if you give it a value, right, value equals, and then inside double quotes, whatever you type in there, becomes the value, an initial value in the text box. So we want the initial value to be whatever the variable sample box is. So if this is the first time the user is coming to this page, from this they'll know that sample box is an empty string. But if it's already been submitted and there was an error in there on any place else in the script, we want it to capture what was submitted from before and so that's stored in our variable. So the text box one is pretty easy. Just include value equals and then our little PHP code in here to print out the variable. Select list, a little more complex. 
So we have our different options, and so value equals an empty quote. So for each of these, we're saying if sample list is equal to, and then whatever the value is. So if they didn't pick anything, then the value is equal to an empty quote. And then we'll say echo selected. So that would show that item from the select list. And if they had picked item A, so if sample list variable was equal to item A, then we would echo selected for item A. And repeat the same thing for B, C, D, etc. To make radio button sticky, it's similar in the input. Right, the input for the button starts up here, and then embedded in here we have a little PHP code. If the radio example was equal to yes, then echo checked. And then for the no value, if the exam radio example was equal to no, echo checked. So for, for this one, if it was check no, then this wouldn't check yes, it would only check no. And then the text area, to make it sticky, we put our print or echo statement in between the opening and closing text area tags. So there's no value equals in text area tag. The value of the text area goes in between the opening and closing text area tags. So once you make those updates, upload it to your server and test and you should have a form that validates and also is sticky.